Today, we're going to be looking at and solving shadow problems in Unreal Engine 5.2. I'm currently in the engine. I've opened up an old scene. Some of you who have been on the channel for a little while may recognize this one. There is a few problems here when it comes to shadows. So this area here that I've selected is a media plane with footage on it. And I'm using an alpha channel, which is supposed to cut around me and allow light to pass through all of the completely transparent areas. That's currently not happening because what's actually happening, and you can see here, this is a very hard line, shadow being casted by the entire plane. And that's because transparent or translucent objects don't cast correct shadows in ray tracing mode still. The only way to solve that currently is to using masked material mode. So let's dive into the material. It looks more complicated than it is. This is the only part that we really need to worry about. There's my texture sample with an RGB coming out. I'm doing a few little tweaks here to saturation and intensity and so on, but essentially that's being piped into the base color. And then you've got an alpha channel just going straight out into opacity. And I've also dragged that out into the opacity mask as well. And you'll see why. My material mode is set to translucent. And that's pretty much the entirety of our problem here. So we'll close that down for a second. And let's go to the material instance that I have. And what I can do is I can override that and set it to masked. Now I'm casting the shadow correctly, but I don't like using masked as a mode because it chews up your edges, especially when you've spent painstaking hours in After Effects getting them to look nice. So how do we get the best of both worlds? Well, we're gonna create a duplicate material and object. So here we go. I don't want this character plane to be masked. Let's change that back to translucent. Then I'm going to duplicate my character plane. So I have character plane two, and I think I will label that character shadow Ooh, no space now the thing that's going to differentiate these two is actually the material so i'm going to go to my content browser where i have my comp material instance um, it's the master material for that that i need so it's comp material there it is and let's duplicate my comp material shadow material so now we've duplicated that, I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm going to literally go into the material and change that to masked and apply that to my character shadow material slot instead of comp material instance. There we go. So that should be working, but we can't see it yet because we need to change our character plane to not cast shadows. So I'm just gonna search for cast and then cast shadow and turn it off. So now we have a character plane with no shadows and a character shadow that is casting a masked shadow. And masked is really fine for shadows because they're soft. You really don't have any edge issues with shadows. And that's all fine until you realize that our character shadow isn't just a shadow. You turn off character plane and realize your character shadow still has the video sequence playing on it. So what we need is a hidden shadow on that object. So on the details panel for character shadow, we're gonna search for visible and uncheck visible. Turns the entire thing off. Then search for hidden and you'll find hidden shadow. Check that to on. There's our shadow on its own and you can reinstate character plane and boom. And the cool thing about this, in my opinion, is that you can now adjust your character shadow plane so that it's more physically accurate with the position of your character. Because you're not always gonna be casting shadows from the perspective the footage was shot at. So we can actually rotate the shadow if we want to make it thinner, make it wider, and we can also move it in space because you'll notice that it's not quite lining up with the feet either. So we want it to line up a bit better, rotate it a bit so that it looks more correct with the position of our lights. That looks better. Now, the reason I'm picking this topic up again is because it does change and iterate with different versions of the engine. And they did just release version 5.2 of Unreal Engine in which hidden shadow actually works with Path Tracer. So I'm gonna turn Path Tracer on just to demonstrate that it works. That's all you really need to see from me. Let me turn my exponential height fog on. Let me turn off my character plane. There's my hidden shadow, which I can then move around like so. 
So I'm really glad that they've added this for Path Tracer. But even having said that, most of the time we're not working in Path Tracer, we're rendering with it. So it's important to have for virtual production so we can control our shadows and export. But most of the time, in fact, 95% of the time, we're working in ray tracing or lumen. So when we're building our levels and we're creating our cinematics, that's the mode we're in. So I thought it was important to make a video to refresh our memory on these key features. So I would like to actually backtrack on something I did in a previous video. This is quite important, I think, because in a previous video, what I did was I was under the impression that when you're using tracked footage and the camera goes from a wide shot like it is now to a close up, that the way I'm handling the footage means that the physical size of me in the scene is getting bigger. This was a misconception because if I jump right out, you'll see how I'm handling the footage. And this is what's important. So you can see the footage is moving around. You can almost see where the plane is and the edges of it. There's an edge there and there's an edge there. In my material for the footage, what I'm doing to my texture sample is I'm using a manual world to screen UV transform. And that basically means that the footage is being scaled to the viewport of the camera, which is why when I jump back out of here, it looks weird because it's all stretched. Uh, the viewport size is different to the way it is when it's in the tracked camera viewport. So if I move my actual viewport, you can see that it's stretching. But then of course, if I scrub through, the footage is getting bigger. So if this was my viewport, then sure, the shadow is scaling upwards as the footage tracks in because our camera and the viewport isn't moving. So I created a whole video to solve this problem. I made a mannequin using deep motion AI. Uh, I recorded some video to match my movement and then used the mannequin as a hidden shadow object and placed it behind me. All of that is completely unnecessary and I'll show you why. Because let's just use our eyes for a second. There's me in the tracked camera viewport. And you can see that right here is where my uh, my head is and my, sh uh, my shadow of my head rather. And you can see the proportions of it. So if I track forwards, the proportions don't change. The, sh the shadow doesn't get bigger because the camera is moving forward. So I made just a error of judgment. I'm quite glad that I'm wrong because doing the whole deep motion thing is <laughs> real pain anyway. So I know people watch these videos and I think uh, it, it's important to call yourself out when you notice stuff <laughs> that you uh, that you're incorrect about. So I, I'm actually glad that this is uh, that this is the case because it means now that we have the ability to create hidden shadow objects, move them around, and even work with tracked footage. So you can't go wrong there.